Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Keely Allen and welcome to a pretty impromptu video. As you can see, I'm sat in my studio. I don't have studio lighting or anything like that. I'm just sat in front of the window and the light is fading because it is winter. It is a big window, but I don't know how much light we have. So if the pace seems a little bit quick in this video, that's why. I do have one light turned on above me, but I don't know how well it's gonna do throughout the video. So hopefully it all looks great. We will see. But today's video is just to show you some new leaves and just some new updates really on some of the plants. There are some really nice anthurium leaves come out, a little bit of some variegation updates for you, some good, some bad. A lot of them are good though. A Delta Force update for you as well. I have a really good looking Forgetii, anthurium Forgetii next to me as well. So today's video is just a really nice chilled plant update video. And I'm gonna start with the stuff next to me because it's here actually. I'm aware that this is quite shit. I am, I really am. You may know, but this plant behind me, it's my Gloriosum. It's sort of collapsed. It's sort of growing along the floor and it's sort of flopped over. So there is actually a massive Gloriosum here behind me, but you can't really see it. I will sort that at some point, guys. It's still on my list to do. Anyway, let's grab the first plant. And I actually have my microphone inside my trousers because there's nowhere to put it. You may have seen this one very recently, but this is a very, very fast update on my Raphidophora tetrasperma variegata. It got a bit crispy up here, can you see? It could be a light thing, it could just be because up here is a little bit drier from downstairs, generally speaking, but it is growing quite well. And it got to a point where I was a little bit worried by the amount of variegation on it because I didn't want a Raphidophora that was too variegated. I wanted something with a bit less, but I'm pleased to say anyway, from the top new leaves, the two of them, which I will try not to get stuff everywhere. The top two, which are here, these two here, are looking quite nice. So I'm actually quite pleased that it's looking like this at the minute. I'm really, really pleased. It was just getting, it was just getting a little bit much, guys. So I'm quite happy with that. I'll put that down. That wasn't necessarily a big update I was gonna give you, but it is here next to me on the table. So we should pop that down. And I will pick up this guy here. This guy is amazing. <laughs> I'm really, really happy with this. Now, you might have caught, I've said on my videos before, oh, I'd love to grow a really big Anthurium Forgetii. It's actually one of my favorite Anthuriums. Literally, they're amazing. But my favorite Forgetii is the one without veins, which is what this guy is. Now, he's got some old leaves here that are a bit battered, but you can see what the plant is actually like. This leaf here is still extremely floppy, so I'm going to handle it with care but you can already tell it's as big as my head. They were doing quite well anyway, but I've just fed them and they are off to a great, great start. If I just rotate that round, you'll see one of the older leaves. Hopefully I won't bash my microphone. That is what it looks like. And again, oh my God, I nearly ripped that. That's not good, is it? This is what he's looking like at the minute. That's literally, that is in line with my head there. That is in line with my eyeballs. And that is how big this plant is. I'm so happy about it. He has, what does he have? He has flower with pollen on it, but nothing going on. And then he's flowering again. I've mentioned this before, but I seem to be getting my plants, specifically my anthurium, to flower an awful lot. And I mean an awful lot. There are flowers all over here. I'm looking at one now that's looking pretty good, actually. What is that plant? It's got huge seeds on it. I can't tell. But yeah, I'm getting a lot of flowers and I'm really, really pleased about it. And that there is my amazing Anthurium Forgetii. And honestly, you should get one of these because they've got to the point where they're so affordable in terms of an Anthurium. And they're so easy to care for compared to a lot of others. They're pretty cool as well because obviously they're a different shape um, that you can see there. So if you've been considering getting one, I would honestly say now is kind of the time for that, to be honest with you. It's really, really good. Little variegation update on this guy. This here is my wonderful, it's one of, obviously, my Syngonium Chiapensi. Now, if I just tilt that there, this is a lesser variegated specimen than some of the others that I have. I mean, the petioles, by the way. Oh my God. <laughs> see if I can get this to you up close because it's actually amazing. Look at that. Can you see that? I hope it's focusing well. Look at that. Oh my God. So these at the minute, these leaves here, if I put that beside me, you can see when I do that, can't you? Yeah, I'm running without my monitor as well because my monitor broke. So I only have my tiny viewfinder in the camera. This has less variegation on these two new leaves here. However, there's so much in the plant, it's obviously gonna take off. So it's looking really nice and healthy at the moment, but I think it's gonna do a really nice big shoot up. I'll show that to you there in the camera. 
See, very, very pretty plant. Oh my gosh, very pretty plant. Loving him. We'll put him down because again, there's not a lot going on with him. He is actually one of the, I think he's one of the more fresh cuttings. He's staked in the back of this pot here just because he is quite wobbly still. So he doesn't have a ton of root, but Syngoniums are just great for stuff like this, guys. They just propagate. Not every single Syngonium on planet Earth, but a lot of them just, they're just cool. They just kind of work for you and they don't give you any problems, so. That's him. These are great, by the way. If you haven't felt them before, their leaves are very rubbery and I really like them. They're quite tactile looking. You wouldn't think that they would be, but they actually really are. They're quite nice. Ooh. And looking right here, we have some really good progression on one of my Philodendron Burley Marks Mint. I think that's what they're going as. You know, I hate that name, but I mean, in this case, it kind of looks mint. There is some good progression. It's behaving exactly like a philodendron burly marks would. Can you see it? Will it focus? Yes, we've got a lot, a lot of reproduction down here. The leaves are looking very good. Now there's more than one growth point in here that you would of course probably expect with a philodendron burly marks. There is only one that is green so far, and this is the leaf that you can see here. If I just show you the plant up there, where is he? Here. This one here is green and he's on his own little shoot, but all of the rest of them are looking really, really good. Trying to look at the new ones. That's been new-ish. Where's the other new ones? Because as I say, there's multiple growth points. This one has been one of the new ones and he's sizing up lovely. You see that there? Really, really, really nice. I do quite like these plants, you know, and they can get quite bushy due to the way that they constantly reproduce. And it's quite nice because you can bush them out before you grow them up. It's not like a lot of the other philodendron climbers where it's like, oh, it's just gonna start going up straight away. You can get a bit more of a bushy effect with it and you can preen it back. You can propagate it. You can give it to your friends and stuff like that. And I love this one specifically right now because the normal burly marks, uh, the variegated burly, burly marks, has gone a long way in terms of selling it and rare plant collectors and learning to propagate and things like that. Therefore, I do actually think this is a reasonably good investment plant. And I say it for the same reasons. And I think I've said this before about this plant, but you can make some cash off this because they've still got good value. Um, so if you're interested, I would think about getting one of these. I have not regretted getting these. These are reproducing really, really quickly for me, as you might expect. So I'm very, very happy with that. Plus, look at that. Is that not awesome? Trying to get out of the way of the camera, guys. Look at that. Oof. Yes. Yes, girl. Yes. We love that. I'd like to take a minute to talk to you about our sponsors of today's video, HelloFresh. I don't know about you guys, but in the run-up to Christmas, I get extremely, extremely busy at this time of year, and I find it difficult to stay organized with what I'm supposed to be eating from, example, when I get back from the gym, filming, whatever it is I've done that day in the shop. I find it a real pain to go to the supermarket and come up with meal ideas on the fly. I guess I'm just not that creative. With HelloFresh, though, I get everything I need delivered to my doorstep, and I'm able to just come home and start cooking without having to go out, get all the ingredients ingredients, and it's just so simple and easy. I love that HelloFresh send you the exact portions you need, so there's no wastage either, which always helps. Plus, I'm never paying for more than I actually need, because I do tend to do that a lot when I go shopping. I don't know about you. There is a ton of menu options, which I was actually pleasantly surprised with when I tried it. They're great even for me as a picky eater. Believe me, I am the worst. Not only that, but I can customize elements of the meal to tailor it more to me, and for example, the fitness regime I've got going on. So, for example, this meal, which is, it's actually one of my favorites at the minute. This is the sweet and sticky chicken. It does actually come as standard with chicken thighs, but I swapped it out for chicken breast in order to get more of a protein hit with less fats. So it was actually really easy to just tailor everything to what I would prefer. It took a couple of clicks on the website and my order was updated and away you go. I love that these meals are really quick to make. They don't take hours and the portion sizes are really generous. It's also 25% less expensive than ordering takeaway food. So if you want to try HelloFresh for yourself, and I highly recommend you do, go to HelloFresh.com and use code KayleeEllen70 for a whopping 70% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com, use code KayleeEllen70 for 70% off plus free shipping. Thank you very much, HelloFresh, and back to today's video. Another plant I want to show you, and I won't linger on this long because it's tiny. This here, we don't know what it is. I bought this in as Philodendron SB 
tropical, so spa, as people say. I don't want people to say spa. I really prefer SP, but maybe that's just me. So we bought that a long time ago, and I've I put this one on my Instagram. I think it's on the shop's Instagram as well, and we've grown it up a pole. Recently, we chopped it down quite a long way, and then we've taken those cuttings and then produced more. And I just wanted to show you what's happened with one of them. So this was the original leaf there, looking nice, looking nice. And the new ones come out a little pink, and I, I don't know why, because the backs of the leaves aren't pink. The backs of the leaves have never been pink, but this one is a bit pink, so I will try and get that up to the camera. Oh, where are we at? There. Can you see what I'm saying? It's got a real pink tone to it. And I find that really bizarre because the plant itself it, it ain't. It ain't pink. It doesn't have pink in there. So it's kind of weird. In terms of how well this propagated, if anybody's curious, I think it's been a very good, strong propagation. I think we might have lost 10 to 20%. If that, I'd have to check. I think generally they've done very, very well. And as I say, I, I can't tell you what it is because I don't think anyone really knows what it is. There's a few kicking around. There's not many. So if you're interested, it does grow very quickly. I can see that this could be quite a cool shape when it matures. I'll just show you that again. Obviously, this is a very young leaf, but you can see that it's probably like it seems to have lobes here and then it sort of dips in at the side, then comes back out like that. So it could be quite an interesting one when it gets bigger. I do still have the mother plant and I'm just going to keep growing it, propagating it a little bit. And then I will take one of the plants and just stop cutting it just so we can see what we get out of it. But this one's looking really nice. I really like this. This is a very, very cute little one to update you on. If you like philodendron, gold dragons, you're going to like this one. Does anyone remember this amazing plant? Oh my God, how good does that look on camera? Has never stopped looking incredible, has it? At any point in time, just in case anyone wants to know how big it is. Oh, that could be a thumbnail, you know, that could be a thumbnail. So this guy is kind of an original leaf. I would love to take the credit for it, but that's not my leaf. What is my leaf, however, is this guy over here, which I will get to in just a moment. If anyone remembers when I got this, it was a little bit fucked in the post and this had all but snapped off. So since then, it has been chopped from the plant. So as you can see, this isn't the whole plant. This is just some of it. But I have grown a new leaf myself, and it is much smaller because obviously this has been chopped. But I tell you something, it's a pretty leaf. It's a pretty leaf. Let me show you this. Now, I've got to be real careful with this one because it's not the kind of thing you can pull on. But can you see that? I'll try and put that in front of my face. I really hope that does focus. Can you see the variegation on that? It is literally gorgeous. Now, that is quite a lot of variegation and the petiole looks like it might give me a little bit of work because I can see it's it's almost, as you might be able to tell, it's almost 50-50 in the petiole there. Mm, not great. And this is the thing, everyone thinks, oh, the more variegation, the better. But honestly, if you grow and produce these plants all the time, it's not. Literally, you want 40 to 50 percent, in my opinion. If you're feeling daring and you really know what you're doing, you can go to 60 percent variegation. I personally like to just stay about 50. If you're a beginner, I would suggest about 40 percent if you're looking for a variegated plant online. Don't be enamored too much by stuff like this. It's lovely. Who doesn't want it? But the reality of caring for it is quite something else. And I still need to do a video on it, guys. I know. I know. I will do that for you at some point, but that's my little update on him. I'm going to put him down very carefully because I really like this guy. This guy was a wish list plant for me for a long time. And for the sake of transparency, I just got to let you know that it doesn't always go as well as that when you buy variegated things. And if you like the update on my variegated Gloriosum, or at least a piece of it, because I do have obviously a lot of pieces at this point. Oh, I'm struggling with it, guys. I really am. So the plant in this pot, you're probably thinking, what variegation? And you'd be right. All of the, the petioles and everything do seem to have variegation in. It's just not always coming out. Now, if you remember, I showed this, this actual leaf here that I'm holding on to. This was still in the caterpillar a few weeks ago when I showed you this. And it had a, a massive spike of variegation up the caterpillar. And I thought, oh my God, yes, it's happening. Well, let me just show you that. It's, it's not happening. It's not even remotely happening. It has happened in the past, if you're wondering. It has. It has. Um, but it's not happening at the minute. Now, I don't know if you're going to be able to see into the pot, but there is more than one growth point in there, essentially. So we have multiple chances in the same pot. I like to propagate Gloriosum this way sometimes. Just cut them down and then let them grow like that and don't disturb the root. You probably get a bit of a quicker yield. It's not the prettiest thing, but... It does work, so that's what I've done with that. Super quick update on that. I'm just, I'm not that happy. But 
honestly, when you look at the bases of all the plants, there is a lot of variegation in there. So I'm a little bit confused as to why it decides to hide on me. So yeah, I'm not having the best time with these guys. I'm really, really not. Which is a really big shame because these things are amazing, literally amazing. But we'll pop him down because he's quite misery inducing. Not like the last one we looked at, the golden dragon. This one's a very, very different story. Right, should I try and grab the Delta Force? I think I should because you need to see this. This is great. Oh God, I'm afraid to touch this plant, guys. I really am. Okay, so you will notice here a dead flower. Do not worry, I have live ones on here as well. And I'm gonna do this very, very slowly. So if you can't tell, right there is my beautiful Anthurium Delta Force, which I think is, oh my God, what is it? A hybrid of... Uh, Anthurium clarinervium. Is it, is it pterodactyl or something that it's a hybrid of? I can't remember anymore now. It's escaped me today. But anyway, it's a, a really random hybrid and it can only be Delta Force if it's from the original mother plant. So any other hybrid of clarinervium and say pterodactyl, it's not Delta Force. A lot of people get that wrong on the internet and growers will try and tell you it's the same. I'm telling you right now, but it isn't. So if you want to buy one of these, do your homework. This one has come from Marie Nock in the US. This is literally part of her plant. It's a real Delta Force. And to be honest, you can kind of tell because none of the other hybrids look quite like this one. But anyway, an update on the plant. I think this is the new leaf. Yeah, it is. It's a little bit smaller. It's a little bit smaller than some of the others, but that's okay. And it's probably smaller because of the amount of flowers we have. Now this one's a very old flower here, this yellow one. It's dying off. I do actually have a new flower that's coming in the middle here. And if I hold this up, I have a another flower that I have mentioned before. Can you see it? I'm going to just try and let it focus a little little bit and stop moving. This will be very, very difficult to show you, but on the end of here, there is a flower with seeds. And I'm pretty sure these seeds here that I will try and hold up for you are, there we go. Hopefully you can see something. I apologize if you can't guys, I really can't go up to the camera, but the seeds on here, there are a couple of them. They should be self-pollination. So basically they should be some lovely little baby Delta Force. Now, whether it seeds true to type, I don't know. Did it, is this the thing that I asked a grower in the US? And I think they said 50% of the time the seeds are true to type. So 50% of the seeds might look like this beautiful, beautiful leaf here. And 50% might not, they might look a bit funky. That's kind of cool to me because we can find some new things even amongst those seeds if anything weird and wonderful happens. So don't knock seeds that they can be very, very fun. Um, it just depends on the plant, obviously. But that was my little update on this guy. He's just, he's unbelievable. Look at him. Honest to God, look at him. He is really quite incredible, is he not? He's big, by the way. That's him compared to my head. So he's about my head size now. But yeah, he lives up here in the studio and he has a happy life. So I'm going to put him back because I am a little bit scared of him because he cost me a lot of money and I don't want to drop him. That would suck. Right, there we go. He can go back and I will pick up another plant for you. Oh, this one's nice, guys. I'm not going to lie. This plant is really, 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 really nice. Okay, this next plant is, is beautiful. I've shown this before. I've shown this quite a lot on videos because it really is that good. So I want to show you how this guy is doing. Can you? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, can we just... <laughs> Wow, oh my God, that might have to be a thumbnail. I don't know, that's pretty incredible. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Sorry, I've just got myself really distracted with how amazing that looked. So if you want to know what this is, guys, this is Anthurium crystallinum red. I think it's called just red crystallinum. You can find them. They just cost a bit of money. I think they originated from Enid over at NSA in the US. And that's where this is from. I did have a couple more back in the day. I think this could be the only one I have left now. I don't know if I have a chunk of one of these. I may have sold two or three. I can't remember where they went, but there are some about, and it's not just me that has them, by the way, there, there are other growers that have them. Um, so you can get them. You can, if you want to look for them, that's cool. I'm not selling any now, I don't think. I don't think I have any, but how literally, literally, how? Like, oh my God, we just need a second. This might be my favorite, favorite leaf of the day. Just look at that. Oh my God. I'm going to put it down because it's a little bit heavy and I've got to go to the gym after this. But this is what the leaves look like when they're hardened. By the way, they go really, really dark. So it's a little bit like a, a dark crystallinum, except 
that happens. That does not happen with regular crystallinum at all. They go kind of bronzy colored sort of when they come in. It don't do that. So if you want a red crystallinum, make damn sure it does this. Otherwise you're paying over the odds for a regular one. And even the petioles, I don't know if you can tell, they are super red as well. So do not get conned. Make sure you get a good one. I do actually recommend them. Look at, oh my God, that's ridiculous. Good. Sorry, I'm really, I don't normally look at my viewfinder at all when I film, but I can't help but stare in the viewfinder. It keeps catching my eye. Really gorgeous plant, this one. And if you're wondering, it's no different from a crystallinum to look after at all. There is literally no difference. So if you're good at looking after crystallinum, you'll be fine. Right, up next we have another NSC Tropical Special. This is Anthurium Fairchild, and it didn't have the best run to start. It's got some old leaves here that are really shit, like they're, they're crap. It has some newer leaves. It has this leaf here where I've started feeding it, and its newest leaf, which is still extremely floppy by the way, so I'll have to be very careful, is this guy. Like, oh my god. I'm just gonna put it in front of the camera and talk about it because I can't remember what it is. I'm sure it's a hybrid. It's either a hybrid or it's not known what it is, but it's known as Anthurium Fairchild. And if I just come up a little bit more, you can see what it is about. I'll show you the hardened leaf again. I mean, I assume it's got some crystal in it because it does look a bit crystally, but it is different than a crystallinum. But that's kind of him at the minute. He has absolutely got to the point where he needs to come out of this pot. This is stupid, this is dumb. Nobody needs this. I need to fix this, but obviously I'm not gonna do anything at all until this guy hardens off and then we can do something because something will happen. It will tear. Literally, I don't even want to think about it. I don't want to think about it. I'm not doing anything until this hardens off, but he's absolutely stunning. So one more time here. This is Anthurium Fairchild looking very, very good. My camera is seriously struggling to focus. It's focusing on my wrist right now. So apologies if that's blurry as hell, but there he is. I'm going to put him down because, oh boy, he's very valuable, I think. So he needs to be looked after. We now have another slightly different anthurium, and I, I know what you're gonna tell me it is, but it isn't. I don't know what this is. It's supposed to be, it's supposed to be anthurium SP velvet. Now, you're probably gonna go, hey, this is a forgetty eye, this is anthurium forgetty eye. I don't think it is. It's always been marked up as that. I think it's come in possibly even a year ago, and it's looked a bit different. I don't even know what I bought it as, or I might have just bought it as SP Velvet, I don't know. But I trust my own tags 99% of the time. So I don't think this is full Forgetty Eye, although it's strangely close. Either that or it's just a more chocolatey, weird form of Forgetty Eye, I'm not sure. If I look at the Forgetty Eye I'm looking at now, it's not quite the same, actually. It's close. So I'm just looking at all the veining. It's close, but it's not quite. There is a bit of a difference. I'll show you him though, because he's great. I think that the major difference here is how dark this guy is as well, because I have dark forgetty eye and he ain't this dark. This is just, this is just insane. He does have a pop coming in as well in the base, so that's good news. But if I just show you here, can you see what I'm saying? Forgetty eye isn't normally that dark and the veining is slightly different. So he's definitely got, there's still a new one coming in here. See what I'm saying? To me, on camera right now, that looks about black. That's ridiculous. That's really, really nice plant. So I don't fully know what he is or what's in him, but that's his, that's what he's got going on. That's his tea, you know? But I really like him and I would probably maybe put this in my house. Although that big forgetty eye next to me that I showed you at the start, that's kind of hot as well. It's gotta be something. I could maybe take the pop and then put that in the house. I, I don't know. I really don't know, but this guy is a little bit special. Look how dark that is. Just to put that into context, by the way, I'm wearing black. And look at that, like, wow, that is ridiculous. That is just ridiculous. Anthurium SP Velvet, don't know much about him, but he's, he's looking pretty slick right now. He's looking pretty slick right now. And that was a cute little leaf update video for you, I guess you could call it. Special thank you to our sponsors for today's video, which is HelloFresh. Remember all of the links for that down below if you want to try it. And if you like this video, please leave a like down below. It really, really helps me out. It lets me know that you like the content I make. And if you haven't already subscribed, please feel free to do so. That's it for this week's video, guys. I hope you liked some of the goodies I had on offer today. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.